Hello everyone. Welcome to PiyushMalik.com. Today we'll be discussing about supraclavicular brachial plexus block. Everywhere it is there. There are a lot of video available in, in YouTubes and websites. So what's new I'm going to talk about? So this is how you, you scan your uh, supraclavicular uh, brachial plexus. This is uh, uh, ideally the head end should be little more elevated uh, they say 35 to 45 degree gives the better picture so you start from uh, carotid and come uh, laterally and uh, you start uh, seeing the subclavian artery once the subclavian artery is visualized uh, most of the time you see the supraclavicular brachial plexus so this is one of those uh, uh, scan of uh, supraclavicular it's it's a video scan now whatever in, you are seeing in the left side of the screen in the middle part the rounded structure is the subclavian artery and just lateral to it uh, it's it's uh, the supraclavicular brachial plexus which is in the bunch of cribs desc description most of the books that gives and the bright line which is below the artery and below the uh, brachial plexus is the first strip. So it basically sits above the first strip and, and lateral to the or superior lateral to the uh, subclavian artery. Now concept is very clear here. You bring your needle, deposit the drug inside the plexus uh, and you see the spread all around the plexus, your block is done. Now let us see how it is been done so a little bit of interscaline anatomy here i will scan upwards you will see now uh, the pulsating uh, subclavian artery will go away from the picture and two muscles will come and in between these two muscles uh, you know there will be interscaline group and in the same brachial plexus supraclavicular becoming interscaline here all right so this is two muscle anterior scalene and middle 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 scalene and uh, in between there is the interscaline group. You get your shoulder block there. All right. Now we come back to uh, supraclavicular brachial plexus with subclavian artery. Okay. Now this is a very thin patient. We'll look after uh, look uh, a different video. It's a very very obese 200 kg patient in next. So what is the next new thing I am going to tell you? Now I am going to tell you things which is clear about cervical axillary fascia everybody have an idea about it but if you give a simple single injection you may not spread the drug all over the brachial plexus you can see it here what the uh, uh, anesthesiologist trying to penetrate to a place where there is a good amount of spread so this corner pocket concept on large sparing might be there so he is trying to go to the place between the rib and the uh, brachial plexus so he is uh, going to deposit uh, the most of the drugs in the corner pocket above the rib uh, in the division level just lateral to the artery all right he is seeing all the time needle uh, uh, tip and uh, his uh, giving those uh, local anesthetic down now is it enough now uh, we use around 20 to 25 ml of local anesthetic still in brachial plexus block uh, people claim that they have used 6 ml 12 ml there is no credit about it uh, as long as you are uh, uh, you are in the safer limit it's uh, fair enough all right for the beginners it's rather safe now the second injection is the lateral to the artery superior at the level of uh, uh, at the top top position one we have given in the corner pocket the other one is in between uh, the 5 to 7 ml uh, you can say what you, i am trying to do is penetrating that cervical axillary fascia this fascia is there from interscalene group to the axilla so you know once you are in the fascia that distension that inflation deflation 
uh, what I have discussed in a in lot of uh, anesthesia and Facebook forum. You can see that. So that is a sign. Here is a sign of sure shot. 100% uh, uh, time that block is going to work. We'll discuss in later part. There is something called inflation. This is inside the fascia. So, you know, uh, it, if you give one ml, it will be distended and it suddenly it will get collapsed, which is not happening here. But this is what uh, uh, happens, inflation, deflation. Now, supraclavicular block in a 200 kg patient, most of the time you get a 50 millimeter needle and uh, thin patient, there is no issues. You see everything very nicely and lung very nicely, uh, pleura, first rib, everything very nicely. So avoid all these things. Now, 200 kg patient with cross injury hand, difficult anatomy. Uh, okay. This is, uh, let's right. have a look. This is a 200 kg guy for supraclavicular block. And can you record it from the screen, Dr. Dia? Yeah. yeah. And this is my... What is the next case? The other case the ready. The next case is ready. Why don't push? Ask your... Uh... Okay. So, this is the needle and this is the needle tip. Aspirate. 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 Aspirating, sir. Yeah. Nothing, sir. Giving one number. Yeah. Give it. Going three days, sir. No yeah. assistance. Okay. Give five over there. Aspirating, sir. Give him 5 ml north. Going to the sir. Okay. Give him 5 ml there. 5 ml there. Yeah, 5 ml given, sir. The needle is looking as if it is in the artery. I'll come back a little. I have aspirated to make it sure that it is not. He's a big guy and you heard the orthopedician who is in a hurry, uh, shifting all the trauma patient one night or the other. Always in a hurry. And uh, thanks for watching.